Hello, and welcome to this five minute overview of Well Architected for Startups. My name is Raj, and I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS. Together with you, I will dive into Reliability Pillar, explain why it is important, and what are the main principles behind it. So let's get started. As a reminder, reliability is one of the five pillars of the Well Architected framework. Make sure to check out the other videos too, as all of them together complete your Well Architected review. The reliability pillar is all about building systems that embrace failure as a natural occurrence. As a startup, you are probably thinking one of the following. My customers are using my services, but want them to be available and functional when they want them to be. If I'm not available, I could lose both brand loyalty and business opportunity. I also need to be able to deploy new features with no impact on my customers. Through many years of running systems for different types of customers and lessons learned from running our own distributed systems, AWS can help you address some of these questions. Let's start with the five design principles behind this pillar, which are listed here. We'll explore each one by also providing examples of how to implement them in your startup environment. Let's start with our first principle. So why as a startup should you consider automation? Consider this, if you have to pay someone, wake them up, get them to read what has happened, then start remediating, you lose valuable minutes. Manual recovery will take much longer, so adopt as much automation into your stack as possible. By monitoring your workflow for key performance indicators that are a measure of business value, you can trigger automation when a threshold is breached. This allows for automatic notification and tracking of failures, and for automated recovery processes that work around or repair the failure. AWS has features that can help you achieve this. For example, we have services that help you automate recovery, like our managed SQL database, RDS, that can fail over to a different AZ on failure, or our global DNS service, Route 53, which can route traffic to different regions if a particular region becomes unavailable. Our compute services let you handle recovery by using auto scaling, and our distributed object storage service, S3, is built to be highly resilient to failure. Let's move on to the second principle. In the cloud, you can test how your workload fails, and you can validate your recovery procedures. You can use automation to simulate different failures or to recreate scenarios that led to past failures. This approach exposes failure pathways that you can test and fix before a real failure scenario occurs. You can use tools like Chaos Monkey or our new service, AWS Fault Injection Simulator, which is a fully managed service for running fault injection experiments. It simplifies the process of setting up and then running these experiments across a range of AWS services, allowing to build confidence in your application behavior. Moving on to our third principle, we will talk about reliability via horizontal scale. But first, let's give a brief overview of the AWS cloud infrastructure. Each AWS region has multiple availability zones, and each zone has multiple physically separated data centers. Each region also has two independent, fully redundant transit centers that allow traffic to cross the AWS network, enabling regions to connect to the global network. This setup gives us a global infrastructure with regions that are highly available and scalable and tolerant to failure. You can use AZs to replace one large resource with multiple smaller resources to reduce the impact of a single failure. This will allow you to distribute requests across these resources to ensure that they don't share a common point of failure and thereby achieving four lines of availability. Putting all this together, you can see how you can use AWS to scale horizontally. An elastic load balancer is redundant in all AZs. If an EC2 in an AZ fails, traffic goes to other AZs and a new EC2 is replaced in working AZ using auto-scaling we talked about earlier. If the primary instance of a database fails, the standby is promoted to primary. If you use RDS, you simply tell it to be multi-AZ. These services automatically replicate data and compute across multiple AZs, providing built-in high availability and data durability. For S3, you can redundantly store your objects on multiple devices across a minimum of three AZs. For DynamoDB, all your data is stored in solid state disks and it's automatically replicated across multiple AVs. We now move on to the fourth principle. A common cause of failure in workloads is resource saturation, which is when the demands placed on a workload exceed its capacity. In AWS, you can monitor demand and workload utilization and automate the addition or removal of resources to maintain the optimal level to satisfy this demand without over or under provisioning. You can also provision capacity automatically based on demand by identifying the right metric or KPIs that it is related to. This strategy can be applied to a number of areas like CPU or memory for an EC2, but can also be applied to container tasks or even database throughput. Let's close with our final principle. 
Adopting a practice of maintaining infrastructure definitions in, in code, often called infrastructure as code, allows for automated change control. This will reduce the risk of manual error, increase development velocity, and ensure tracking of changes. As a startup, you can use IC third-party tools to achieve this, or you can use AWS CloudFormation that lets you automate and manage resources in AWS and give you a strong reliability position as your startup scales and grows. Thank you for watching this episode of Reliability Pillar. Keep watching this series as we dive into each of the other pillars. Next step, you can start evaluating your workloads by using the self-service, well-architected tool in your console. Thank you.